What's up, my dude? Hello, everybody. This is, you know, the usual uh, burn and rye at when you're listening to the bodacious rant. You know, it's a, uh, it's a little different. You know, like I said, the the movie the movie season's kind of back into it, and not just at home in theater. So it was a bit of a nice change today. Burn, how are you? I'm good. It, you know, just uh, going to the theaters again. It's a very different experience. You know, I do kind of like that. Uh, there's a blocked out seating because I have a whole little section to myself. If I oh if my I God, pick my yeah. seat right away, you know. Especially in Dolby, dude. I, I mean, I don't. I have my own little comfy chair. It's like I'm sitting on my own couch essentially. So mm-hmm. I, I, I like that. But you know, today we're gonna talk about. A random movie that I had no intention of seeing mm. at all. It was actually Byrne who kind of, you know, I was like, let's just go. Let's just go check it out. Given we did it in our own respective theaters just because, you know, that's just the way it is. <laughs> we don't um, live together. No, we don't live together, <laughs> no. And uh, so we, we got to see Guy Ritchie's new film, Wrath of Man, starring uh, Jason Statham. And Byrne, what were your uh, what were your first thoughts on it? Well, I mean, just like you said, uh, it was a movie that kind of came out of nowhere for me because I didn't even know Guy Ritchie was making it in the movie. I mean, his last movie that he made, The Gentleman, which came out in in early 2020, right? Like, it came out, like, January of 2020, if I don't remember, if I remember correctly. Like, yeah, before... that was one of my favorite movies of last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the <laughs> fact that, you know, this one came out, I was like, whoa, when... When, when did he have time to make another movie? Did he make it during the pandemic? Or, like, how did I hear about this? But, you know, so that just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, when we had went to go watch Mortal Kombat uh, a, few, a couple weeks ago, when we saw the trailer play before that, I was like, huh, what's this? Like, I have no, I had no knowledge of this existing at all, <laughs> or this being a thing. And I got to say, this is a pretty dope movie. It, it was a very nice surprise. Now I'm going to be completely honest. I went into this movie thinking this is going to be the dumbest shit in the world. Just because, you know, I love Jason Statham. Don't get me wrong. And I loved Guy Ritchie, what he did with The Gentleman. But he has had plenty of flops over the years. Yeah, very hit or miss. Yeah, and I thought this would be a huge miss just because it's like, okay, a revenge story. And the whole plot of it essentially is that um, Jason Statham plays a, a random guy who joins a armored car company. And thinking he barely passes, uh, you know, the test to be in that company, but he ends up just being a total, you know, wild card where he, he's an expert shot. You know, he's a man on a mission. And <laughs> he turns out to be Jason Statham. <laughs> basically, yeah. And he, it's just it kind of goes from there. He's exploring the criminal underworld to find out who killed his son in a bank robbery or no, an armored car. An armored robbery, car I'm robbery, sorry. yeah. And. I just thought, okay, so it's like John Wick and um, and that movie Armored, you know, with Matt... Uh, I was about to say, it was kind of like that movie Armored with, with Matt, Matt Dillon, Dillon and... Um, and a few and other I, people. Yeah, I don't really remember <laughs> yeah. who was in it. I just remember Matt Dillon was in it. It did not... Do, it was not good. Mm-mm. But I... I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm like surprised how much I really liked it. I was getting a kick out of it in there, just thinking like, okay, who's who? Like, what's happening here? Like, where's this going to go from there? And again, it was actually just really good. Very much like, mm-hmm. you know, the gentleman, Armored, and John Wick all mixed into one, really. Now, is it as precise and as great as John Wick? No. No, I don't, I don't compare the two. Partially just because it's, they're so different, you know, um, movies yeah. kind of but they're, they're stylistic in their own ways yeah you know john wick has more gun foo where it's a lot more physical there's a lot more you know bullets mm-hmm. being spent where jason statham is just you know hard hitting you know very streamlined action and yeah. again it didn't it actually really did well i don't even know the the current ratings on it now to be honest but i know it's got a fresh rating at at, at this point you know which does is it really a, i'm gonna yeah. look it up i gotta look it up <laughs> which real quick, is surprising just too but like you said um it was kind of cool seeing the action in this movie in particular because unlike John Wick, like you were mentioning before, the action here is a lot more grounded. Like you said, like there isn't a lot of gung fu going on. Maybe like kind of, but a little bit more in a believable sense. You know, whenever Jason Statham lets you know lets loose, it's more believable. Unlike a lot of his other previous action roles, you know, namely the like the, the Transporter <laughs> movies or you know him in the in the Fast and Furious movie and Hobbs and Shaw, which is you know our favorite movie of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it was my last favorite Jason Statham movie that I'm not ashamed of because that was actually really fun. 
<laughs> and yeah, you are right. It is at 67% out of 169 reviews. So that's a really solid rating. I yeah. Again, I kind of thought this was going to be just a stupid revenge story, you know, some BS action and stuff. Or maybe a couple good action scenes, but it was just going to be cheesy as all hell. And mm-hmm. I was, it was quite the opposite. There were some moments. I'm, I mean, uh, what movie doesn't have cheesy moments? But it was solid. Like, I, uh, the, oh, first off... Um, you know, again, guys, before we continue on, just know this is a non-spoiler. So definitely just, this is just our initial reactions to it. Um, Jason Statham steals the show, no matter what. It's and his so, show. Yeah, and he, it and really he steals is. it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, like, and then the cast is really surprising. This yeah. is the first movie Josh Hartnett has been in forever. This is the and... movie, first movie I've personally seen him in since, like, probably 30 Days of Night. I know he's done a couple, like, other roles here and there in, like, smaller movies, but I haven't seen him, like, in anything, I guess, like, this commercial in a while. Dude. A while. Kind of... And I really like Josh Hartnett, especially in 30 Days of Night, Sin City for his small role. Mm-hmm. Um, Black Hawk Down, he was really Black Hawk in. Down was great, yeah. And it's <laughs> the just... faculty. That's a, the that's a, that's faculty. A, that's a deep cut. <laughs> no one knows i feel like not everybody knows about that and that's such an underrated movie but yeah um so he was really good in it it had the guy from um not dexter but that other show he was in hitch I, oh I mind hunter the, the guy from mind hunter right is that what you're thinking of from netflix yeah and i keep forgetting his name even though it's such a simple thing but it's mick 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 something mick cali or mick mick something like that but you know uh, the jeffrey last movie- donovan Jeffrey oh, Donovan. Oh, Jeffrey that's Donovan. Okay, that's this guy from uh, Sicario, right? Yes, he wasn't. That's in, that's right. He wasn't Sicario. I totally forgot he was in there. Mm-hmm. I thought you were um, talking about the flat top guy. <laughs> no, Holt Holt McElhaney, though. That's his name. He actually, I really liked his character in it, mm-hmm. and you know the the rest of the supporting cast was solid. It actually, uh, featured Raúl Castillo, who we're going to see in Army of the in Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead next week. All oh, so, right. It was kind of nice seeing him in a role before that, just because I've never heard of him. I've never seen him in anything, so mm-hmm. I'm kind of glad I got to see him do something before that movie. Um, it has Laz Alonso from a uh, Laz Alonso from The Boys, who's uh, Mother's Milk. And yeah, he was in uh, Fast, the Fast and Furious, the Fast Four, where he was the dude with a Soviet tattoo and uh, the 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 GTO. Yeah, it was a G. No shit, what was it? Gran Torino. Mm. It wasn't a great movie, but you know. I was gonna say I don't even remember him being in there. You know, that's just because to show uh, how much I think of those movies. But you know, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> that was the first one I ever saw him in. It had Scott Eastwood in it. Yeah, and, then another, and Scott and a, Eastwood was really good. I, this is probably like the best I've seen Scott Eastwood in particular. Like you know, just his acting alone. I think this is probably his best performance that I've seen. I haven't seen him in a lot of other stuff, but then he hasn't really impressed me in a lot of other stuff. Here, I just despised him, and that's a good that's a good thing. Yeah, he he did a great job. And we're, again, we're not going to spoil who his character is, but just know he's he's definitely the villain, and you don't really feel bad for this guy at all. But that's kind of why I liked him. In, in mm-hmm. the way. But um, and then it featured a familiar face, you know, Eddie Marsan, who was in the gentleman as Big Dave, who tried to take down uh, Matthew McConaughey, mm-hmm. and so. So, like I said, the cast I really liked. The supporting was very good, and then a surprise cameo. Did you did you notice that in the beginning, Fern? Who you're not who, talking? About, you're not talking about Andy Garcia, right? <laughs> not Andy Garcia. He was cool, but no, the other the one of the criminals in this. Oh, he was uh, in the trailer. Are you talking about Post Malone? <laughs> yeah, I like Post Malone. He was a, again. He was only in for a couple seconds, but it's like. He's getting into the movie game bit by bit. First, I saw him in Spencer Confidential, and now he's in this. Like he's uh, he's coming up, and I, I kind of like seeing him. See him. Sp- uh, besides his awesome music, I like seeing him in movies right now. As, like, Usually, with character. like you know, really big kind of like celebrity cameos like this, it can kind of be distracting or make you think like, oh man, why are they, why are they in this? He didn't do that for me. You know, he nope. he wasn't like you know he didn't take away anything from the movie. He didn't take me out of the movie. And yeah, that's all I can say about a. Uh, but go posty. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just again, he, he played a really he played a kind of like a funny character, and yeah, he definitely didn't steal the show. He added actually onto it really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then let's keep going. Uh, so, anything else about the cast that you like, Burn, or should we keep going through maybe other stuff we like? What else did you like besides the cast, Burn? Well, I mean, the the cast was great. Uh, the action, as we mentioned, was really good. Um, mm-hmm. Sort of, uh, I don't mean to ding without remorse, you know, on another review, but I'll, <laughs> but I'll just no, say... No, you do. Just, just go with it, <laughs> But I'll just we say, know you know, you know that this movie kind of does what I said 
you know movies like this should do you know again this is a typical revenge movie but what's different here is that there's some style to it you know that the action here is done with a real like I liken it to being punched in the mouth with uh, brass knuckles <laughs> by <laughs> by an English man, and that English man is a uh, is you know is, is the Jason Statham. Where's he? I don't know what he is, but I'll just say he's English. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely British. They they he's kind of like the our generation's uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, where he can't get rid of his accent. He's just we mm-hmm. we acknowledge who he is, except we actually acknowledge yeah he's British in America. Yeah, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, he just went completely under the radar. Yeah, no Arnold, one acknowledges his accent. <laughs> John Claude Van Damme, you know those guys, you know from from the eighties, you know yeah you're right. He's kind of like a modern like eighties action hero, and he does a really good job in this movie, you know with with again the action being a little bit more different than what we've seen Jason Statham do, where he's not you know throwing kicks and using his martial arts uh, expertise. He's just really just like hard nails you know running and gunning and and makes it like super believable and then you know he's always such a a good person to play those very like stoic and angry characters like he doesn't say much and and that's kind of one of those things that i kind of thought was very different for especially for a guy Ritchie movie where it's not very talky you know a lot of a lot of his movies have really snappy dialogue and you know all these characters are really you know busting each other's balls throughout the movie and this is very different where it wasn't like that at all. So it, was, it kind of took me off guard. I was like, this is a Guy Ritchie movie? Like, there, this is, doesn't really have that sort of flair that, that Actually, you usually quite see. The, I thought quite the opposite. Except maybe not with him necessarily, but everybody else did the talking for him, essentially. True. Like, yeah, Cole McElhaney's character talked a lot. Josh Hartnett's character talked a lot. And then, you know, everybody else kind of did the talking. Like, there was still bits of that, like, Guy Ritchie flair, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. The supporting cast, though. Yeah. Because, you know... Last think, one, we kind of noticed that there was a lot more talking with, like, uh, Matthew McConaughey and Charlie Hunnam's characters and stuff. But this mm-hmm. time, totally flipped it. They definitely went the John Rick, Wick route with Jason Statham. And like you said, his stoicness, like, totally worked. I was just like, okay, yeah. I'm digging this. And, and, and what really, I think, uh, played into that real well was the score for the movie. Mm-hmm. The music was really good. It, it's really kind of, they use the same motif over and over throughout the movie. But it punctuates what happens on screen really well. Like, it's sort of very, like, droning and, and sad. But there's, like, this menace about it, too. And it really puts you in the mindset of uh, Jason Statham's character. And I thought that worked really well. Yeah, it was it was uh, almost like a foreshadowing of, like, what's going to happen within the story, almost. Like, mm-hmm. we all know what's going to happen. But this music just keeps kind of, remind like, bringing you into it. Like, oh, this is... This is this is what the purpose it just keeps reminding you what the point of this movie is so yeah i do agree with that because the the score every time it kicked in i was like oh man i feel it in this scene much more mm-hmm. than i should um and i watched it in dolby too so that really punched up the the you know the gunshots and then the the sound design too like i said like immediately when i knew when i was gonna like this movie was when it started and that score hits just like the big boom boom like the bass hits i'm like oh Okay, this is <laughs> this is my jam. <laughs> yeah, again, Dolby makes the world of difference. And again, thank really God does. our A list stayed. I'm glad AMC kept that A list. You know, side note, just because it would it, not. I mean, I would still go back to the movies, but it just it's less hurt on my wallet when I can go when I want to. You know, what absolutely. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we got the action, we got the cast. Oh, uh, and the again, the plot. It was actually fairly simple. Yeah. With a little bit of, I mean, I again, this is all, I only have only seen it once, just because we both saw it today. So I couldn't really pick out anything like that didn't make sense at the time. I'm sure once we do watch it again or something like that, or mm-hmm. if people, if you guys are pretty canny on that stuff and you can pick that out, cool. Let us know in the comments maybe what we have missed. By the way, it's like. This was a movie that brought me into it, and I tried to look for stuff wrong with it just to be critical, and it was kind of hard to, to be honest. Yeah, like, it, it's a real testament to Guy Ritchie's uh, master like craftsmanship behind, because he is very much an auteur. You know, when you watch a Guy Ritchie movie, you know it's a Guy Ritchie movie, and I, where this one's a little bit less flary and like the very flamboyant sense of like you mm-hmm. know these characters being really outlandish, like we've seen in a lot of his other movies. And it's a lot more toned down here, but the way the story is given to us, sort of, you know, in his classic Richie fashion where it's non-linear, it worked real well to make this very generic story, you know, very hard-hitting and, and interesting to watch as we're, we're really peeling back the layers of the mystery. Whereas, you know, if you played it straightforward, 
it would be fine. But I think with the added, you know, visual uh, and storytelling flair of Guy Ritchie, it, it really helps the movie other than, you know, taking away from it and being distracting. It really punctuates it. Yeah, the only critical thing I will say was just with the cinematography and how it did some weird zoom in shots, zoom out shots yeah. in, so, in some scenes. It, it didn't completely take me out of the movie, but I just thought to myself watching like, what was the point of that? Why didn't you just kind of keep it? zoomed out and then zoom in later or don't zoom in at all just leave it very wide true um so but besides that little technical aspect um really can't think of much there were some awkward angles and some of the action like it was a little too like not shaky but just awkward awkward visuals Mm -hmm. like it was just kind of i but i think that was the point it was supposed to be like obscure like you're in the moment so you're not supposed to see everything super clear yeah not not that it's like really really distracting where no. you know a lot of other movies will use like shaky cam to really disorient you and you don't really know what's going on here you know it does a real good job of like you said letting you know where things are going but sometimes obscuring things purposely where you where there was like one particular instance in like sort of the last action sequence where we're like wait did, did he just do that and then it comes yeah. into play later on and you're like okay that was very much intentional exactly but Overall, burn. Um, I'm gonna give this movie out of rantings. I'm gonna give it a four. It was nice. a, it's a pretty solid four, just because again, this is still early in the movie or early in the year. I'm sorry, and I'm sure I do throw fours out a lot, but this is definitely a movie I recommend. Whether you're a Jason Statham fan, an action fan, a revenge story person, you know, and, even a heist movie fan, and a heist movie exactly. If you're just a kind of fan of any of those genres. Or you're just looking for a fun, you know, pretty straightforward movie. This is the movie to go see, like, for sure. Even more than, like, maybe Mortal Kombat and Godzilla vs. Kong. Even though I really love the, I really like those movies, too. Mm-hmm. This one was just another good addition to going back to the theaters. Like, another reason to. Yeah, where well, those movies are a little bit more grand and epic in their in their scale and their ambition. So this one is very much more like a, a down and dirty, very dark, uh, gritty you know, street level messed up movie where there are some really dark moments. I'm like, oh man, this is that. That's one thing I'll say about this is probably like his darkest movie that he's he's made, and and I think he did a really good job of it. Where it didn't become oppressive, it was always very like entertaining throughout. And because of that, I'll also give it a four out of five. You know, it's it's a really good action movie. Uh, you know, a pretty generic story, but again punctuated by really really well done execution and we can only get that from people like guy Ritchie at the helm where you know they know their stuff <laughs> and they flex on you even when you don't know when they're doing it aka the team behind without remorse you should have taken notes because no you're you're completely right if you're gonna do a generic story like this you definitely have to mix it up and that's and without remorse is the only other revenge story we've really seen this year so far Mm -hmm. that one definitely flopped compared to this like i would rather watch this over that and it sucks because i love michael b jordan and i like you know military movies like that and stuff but it just wasn't it really was bad compared to this one so Mm -hmm. but i agree with that rating burn good stuff so like i said uh ladies and gentlemen um if you haven't seen it, definitely recommend go checking it out just because it's only in theaters, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it's not on HBO Max or anything streaming yet. So if you're looking for a reason to go back, this is definitely the movie to go back right now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm 100% second that if you know if you feel comfortable you know, going to see it in the theaters and you're looking for a movie to watch, this one is definitely one that should be on your list. And it's, you know, it's, it's the start of, I think, a, a really stacked month where these next few weeks we're going to get a lot of good releases. So this is definitely a good appetizer for those, I'd say. Absolutely. And keep an eye out for Army of the Dead. We're going to do a non-spoiler review of that just because we're going to go uh, drop some money and go see it in the theaters this upcoming week. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And then next week when it drops on Netflix, be prepared for a spoiler review. Just, you know, a hint to uh, get, let you guys know now. now. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Absolutely. And there might be uh, some other goodies, you know, in and around that time. So, you know, definitely keep an eye out because we got a lot of stuff to talk about coming up. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, the, the, again, the season is, is finally, you know, it's starting to, to roll on through. But, Burn, um, I'll talk to you later, and everybody stay bodacious and keep on ranting. Absolutely, everybody. Be good. Be safe. You know, let us know if you've watched the movie. What did you think of it? And if you haven't, go check it out. 
definitely Please definitely do. go to check it out check it out nah i will uh, i'll talk to you later man see you brother man see you dude